there's a lot of people who are looking in from the outside and making a decision about whether or not I can do something or not because I'm a woman. There's a lot of people who look in from the outside at someone with a disability and decide whether or not they can do something because they have a disability. They don't get to be the ones to make that call because it is not their lived fucking experience. <laughs> like, you don't get to be the one to make that call. Welcome to Chez Jeunesse, the place of new beginnings. My name is Katherine Hubert, and I founded and own a French-inspired cafe where, as a team, we are on a mission to change the way that our world understands neurodiversity and employs humans with disabilities. Our restaurant was born and is based in Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's where we practice and teach our mission and model. This is our channel where we dive in deep to who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Our hope is that this content is empowering to disabled and non-disabled humans alike, and that no matter no matter what perspective you are coming from, employer, employee, parent, friend, or Shazeness fan, you feel welcomed, you learn something new, and you walk away with a deeper appreciation and understanding of humanity. Hey everybody, welcome back. You're gonna see me in two different outfits on two different days, actually in two different weeks in this video, and that's because my intent was to sit down today and film for the video that you're about to watch, which is the feminine rage of it all, which is something that I've been thinking on and actually I'm super pumped to speak on. However, my mood this week has actually been a little bit more somber. I've been experiencing some sadness and, and some fatigue as well. And so I didn't feel like that I had quite the punchiness to bring to the rage of it all and felt like that was necessary to tap into that to actually portray what I wanted to over the course of this video. So I could have just waited and done it all at one time, but I'm coming on here to say this bit because part of the feminine rage <laughs> of it all is that there are there's a lot of emotional labor that women do in our world and in our society and in our workplaces, in our family units, in our friend circles, and that emotional labor can be really tiring and sometimes it can bring some heavy emotions and so i've been feeling that this week so it does actually tie into the overall theme and i just wanted to voice that i'm experiencing that at the moment i wanted to be real about that i wanted to include it into this content because it is part of this content it all ties in but i wanted to come back when I do have the fire in my belly a little bit more so that I can fully depict and describe. Bye, Jacob. Bye. I'm really glad he got to hear me say the fire in my belly. <laughs> I don't think he was really paying attention, but that's funny. I didn't even know he was there until I turned around. Yeah, I want to come back. I want to be able to give it the passion and the energy and the oomph and all of that that I think this topic requires and that I honestly have been feeling more so than not recently. So this week has been a little bit of an exception that I'm not in like Eeyore land, but I definitely have just, I think some more of the like sadder emotions of some of the things that I have been frustrated about have started to hit this week. So anyways, that's it. I even had my like wild and free shirt on and my like black bra under my white t-shirt to like really represent to the best of my ability in still a wardrobe appropriate for work context that I'm like here to be bold and sassy and then I just was too sad. So anyways, if you can relate to that, drop me a comment below. You won't notice the week break, but I will. I'll be back next week. You'll see this all at the same time. We're here for a good time. Thanks for being along for the ride. Hey everybody, welcome back. So glad to have you, our little YouTube community here with me today. This video is about the feminine rage of it all, which may or may not be partially inspired by Taylor Swift and the Tortured, Port Tortured Poets Department release and addition to the Eras tour that I've been getting an onslaught of videos in my Instagram feed about. It definitely does not originate with that, but there has been a little extra fuel added to the fire because of that and 
sparked the idea for this video in particular. That being said, as I've been thinking about and preparing for coming on here and talking about this topic, it creates an interesting problem that proves my point and also works against me <laughs> at the same time, which is what it feels like to be a woman. So I thought about, like I, I've been thinking through kind of all these different moments in my career, especially with Chez Jeunesse, which is the little restaurant that I have here in Greensboro, where obstacles have been thrown up in front of me specifically because I'm a woman. And then kind of the tie-in of like, how does that tie into the work of disability integration and employment? Where do I see some similarities? How is that actually pushed me deeper into the work that I'm doing, all of that. Like these are things that I've been thinking on. But as I've been thinking through those moments, part of me was like, well, I wanna come on and share those moments because they've been impactful, because they're real life experiences, because they've informed a lot of the way that I do work, the way that I show up in the world, the way that I show up in my business. And then I was like, but you know what's gonna happen if I come on YouTube and I start listing off <laughs> all of the complaints that I have about how I have been treated unfairly because I'm a female business owner. I was like, you know what people are gonna say about me? They're gonna say that I'm a bitch. They're gonna say that I'm bitching about my job. And I was like, and there lies the feminine rage of it all, right? Like that's the, that's the position where it's like, not only do you face the barriers on the front end, but then when you talk about them, you're asked to be quiet because you're told that talking about them is what makes you a bitch. But if we don't talk about them, then how are we gonna change the system? Which is why they don't want you to talk about them <laughs> because people who are in power who don't want women to be in power don't want us to talk about how we should have power. As you can tell, there's a lot to be mad about. And that's really, I think, the gist of what I wanna get at today because I could come on here, I could talk about all of the instances where I have felt belittled, I have felt mistreated, where I feel people assuming things about me because of my gender, all of that, right? And maybe I will share some of those examples in this video, but I don't feel like that's the, that's the main point. In honor of Taylor Swift, Shajan S teammates, your keyword this week is alchemy. I think the main point that I want, or the main points that I would like to make are number one, anger is a powerful tool. Anger can be misapplied, anger can be used to do damage, but it doesn't have to. There are many instances where our anger actually provides the energy that we need to push back against an injustice. We can see this in a lot of different spheres, we can see it in a lot of different spaces. I have personally used it, one, to push back the injustice that I have experienced being a young woman in particular in business. I was 30 years old when I started this restaurant and I have the soft face of a, you know, 14 year old, but the gray hairs <laughs> of a woman in my mid to late thirties. But because I present as a young woman, there are certain things that I have experienced because of that. But then also being in work that has a social impact model, which is changing the way that our world views and employs people with disabilities and really pushing for disability integration and equality and what does that mean and what does that look like, especially within our workplaces. There's a lot of anger that I am able to use to push me to think at a deeper level, to challenge the way that systems and structures are done, to tackle my own bias, to ultimately, which maybe feels counterintuitive, but ultimately to hold space for other people to go through their own process and to encourage them to do their own work. So it can be a really good thing. It can be a really powerful thing. And I want us to take note of that, to not shy away from anger, to not push it out, to not push it down. Don't push it down. <laughs> that does not go great for anyone. <laughs> But to pay attention to it, like the things that make us angry are important markers typically in our lives. So pay attention to that anger. Where is it coming from? And then use that powerful energy that that anger creates and provides to actually push forward into change. It can be exhausting and I want to recognize that. I think the other points and the other parallels here that I experience are 
societally, as I mentioned earlier, we want people in power who want to remain in power, who believe that power can only be given to a few or should only be given to a few, are going to try to keep the voices of those they don't want in power silent or small. It's not fair. That's not equal. That's not part of the human experience or living in community or living in a society where people are given equal rights and opportunities. And so actually using those opportunities where we're being encouraged to be quiet or we're being silenced to not necessarily get louder sometimes, but to not give up, to keep in mind that our voices are important, they're worth being heard, to look intentionally for spaces where those voices are valued and respected and to practice using our voices in those safe spaces first and then to be brave and to be bold and to push against the expectations or the limitations that other people may place on us. I was told when I started this business by the president of the Entrepreneurship Center here in Greensboro who read over my business plan that I would be better off buying a Mexican restaurant that had gone out of business and throwing up a sign that said under new management, then I would be trying to execute the business plan that I had worked on for years and brought into his office. And there was this moment of like, am I gonna take this person's opinion of me and of my business over what I know to be true about myself and about the work that I want to do and the work that I've been preparing to do? Or am I gonna take a risk on myself? Because it is a risk. There was no guarantee that it was gonna work. I thought that I was creating something that could work and that had a shot at working and that I was giving it everything that I could so that it could succeed. But I knew that I wasn't the only piece of that equation, that there were other things out of my control that were gonna have to work in order for it to ultimately be successful and sustainable. So was I willing to take that risk and to push into it even when someone was telling me that it was never going to work or that I could be more successful doing something else? And honestly, I might have taken that more seriously if the follow-up question hadn't been, and do you want to have kids someday? That really pissed me off. (laughs) I was like, that is actually none of your business and I will be leaving now with my business plan. Thank you very much. (laughs) And I chose to do it. And you know what? I don't have (laughs) kids because I chose to do this business instead. Like saying yes to something may mean saying no to other things. I don't regret that. I don't wish that I had chosen something different for myself. And I'm thankful that I listened to my voice and my internal voice over the voice of someone else who really at that point didn't have insight or merit to speak into my life, especially not in that way. But that's taught me a lot about getting real with myself, about getting grounded, about it's more than believing in myself. I do believe that I'm capable. I do believe that I can do things. I think I have a decent grasp on what my skill set is and what my capabilities are, and I'm learning more and more what my limitations are. But it's more than belief in myself. It's also a willingness to invest in myself and a willingness to be true to myself and to follow through on my gut and to follow through on the dreams that I have things that have been living in my imagination that need to be out in the world and the willingness to do that at the risk of other people not liking me, at failing at getting things wrong and then having to correct them and the willingness to like learn as I go and know that I'm not gonna have all the answers on the front end, but am I willing to take the steps in and keep learning and growing as I go? That's been something that's been really valuable. I mean, there is just this stubbornness of if you tell me I can't do something, (laughs) I'm for sure going to prove you wrong. (laughs) Uh, There's kind of that like, it's competitiveness, it's stubbornness, it's the like wanting to, it's that challenge. Like if you're gonna challenge me to something, like you can't do that. I'm like, okay, great. Challenge accepted, I will do it, I will do it. Not in a peer pressure way. I'm not very easily peer pressured, but like when it comes to I want to do this thing or I'm going to do this thing and then someone being like, you can't do that or that's not going to work. Be like, watch me. And I do feel like with this particular business, there have been many instances where I have done that. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Opening a restaurant that hires people with disabilities. Don't you know people with disabilities can't be in high stress, high stimulus environments? Don't you know that people with disabilities can't safely work in a kitchen? Don't you know? You know, and the list goes on don't you know? (laughs) When have you done it? (laughs) How do you know? (laughs) That's the thing. Like 
You don't know because you aren't actually doing it. I get to be the one to decide that because I'm the one who's doing it. There's a lot of people who are looking in from the outside and making a decision about whether or not I can do something or not because I'm a woman. There's a lot of people who look in from the outside at someone with a disability and decide whether or not they can do something because they have a disability. They don't get to be the ones to make that call because it is not their lived fucking experience. (laughs) Like, you don't get to be the one to make that call. I, as the woman in business, get to make the call about whether or not I can do something and whether or not I want to do something. A person with a disability gets to decide whether or not they want to be the person who is going to do something or not. Placing that limitation on another person because of the perception that you have of them is deeply flawed and deeply damaging. We do that a lot in our culture in many different ways. It is not specific to just these two areas. These are just the two that I am speaking on because they are the two that intersect the most with my current life and lived experience. But there's an opportunity to push in, to push against, to prove wrong. That can be deeply satisfying, but it is not without a lot of sweat, (laughs) without a lot of emotional labor, without digging deep and knowing who you are and being willing to stand in that no matter what someone else may say about it. So that felt like there was going to be a continuation to that. And then I was like, nope, I think that was it. I like my intonation made it sound like we're going further with this. (laughs) I think we're not. I think that's where I think that's where it's landing today. That's my little bit of rage that I'm willing to show in today's video. There's obviously more in there. You can probably sense it and feel it through the camera here. But what am I gonna do with it? I guess that's, that's the, the wrap up. Okay, there is rage. There should be. What are we going to do with it? I don't want to just use it to burn me up on the inside and I don't really want it to be used to burn other people up on the outside either. But I do want to use it to create new paths. If we're thinking along the analogies of fire here, fire can be used in really positive ways. It can be used in really destructive ways, but it can be used to burn something down so that we can build something new or that there's room for new life and new growth to happen. And that's where I think we can powerfully push the rage of injustice to burn down the things that do need to be burned down so that the new life can actually spring forth and we can do things differently. I know that sounds idealistic. I know that it's not something that's gonna happen quickly. It's not something that's gonna happen without scars, but my guess is that I'm not alone in this. I know I'm not alone in this. If I'm talking to you and this is resonating with you at all, I don't know what (laughs) the call to action should be. Being like, drop a fire emoji in the comments. So it feels just like super lame and not not at all helpful. But maybe something that you believe about yourself that other people haven't believed for you. Something that you know about yourself that other people have denied in you. And the unity that we can find by being a champion for ourselves and being a champion for the people around us, cheering each other on to be the people that we already are and encouraging the fullness of our human selves to actually show up and be present in the world and to be seen and to be celebrated. That's what I'm about. That's what we're about. That's why we're here. Thank you for being here. I'm going to go drink some water and walk around the block and bring my heart rate back down. Thanks so much. We will see you next week.